All right, I verified inverses algebraically, okay? So yesterday we focused on um, graphically. Today is all about algebraic and it's using composition, which was in one, three, okay? The key concept here is that if two functions are inverses of each other, when you compose them into each other, the ending result will be X. If the ending result is not X, then they are not inverses. So when I plug one function into another, after I combine like terms and simplify, I get down to X, then they are inverses. So to start off, so for example, the question is, if we have F of X equals one fourth X plus three and G of X equals four X minus 12, the question is, are they inverses of each other? So to test that they're inverses, we're gonna use composition. So remember this is composition. Okay, this was from our one, three C notes. Okay, composition means you're plugging something inside of something, right? The difference here is instead of having a number, we have a whole function. So we're literally just taking all of G of X and plugging into F of X. So, we are composing. So wherever X used to be is now gonna become four X minus 12. So I'm gonna replace X with four X minus 12. So this used to be X. And now it's four X minus 12. Now I'm gonna distribute. So when I distribute, I'm gonna do one fourth times four one fourth times 12. And that's just division, right? Four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three. So I divide, I combine like terms. So I have negative three and positive three and they're gonna do what? They're gonna cancel each other out, right? And I'm just left with X. So, so far we're on the right track. So I got an X on this one. This time I'm gonna plug F into G. So whatever F is, it's gonna replace the X in G. So instead of G of X, we now have G of one fourth X plus three. So this is my new value of X. So it's gonna substitute in as X. So remember this used to be X. I'm gonna distribute and combine like terms. So four times one fourth is one, four times three is 12. So now down to the combining the like terms. I have a positive 12 and a negative 12, so they are going to cancel out and I'm left with X, which is what I needed. So because they both result in X, that means that the functions F and G are inverses. Okay, so that's how you verify inverses algebraically. So without graphing, that's what you would do. Okay, so we're gonna graph it so that we can show you what it, why it looks like that. So here we have one fourth X plus three and four X minus 12. Yesterday we went over graphing. So I'm gonna start at zero three. My slope is one over four. So I'm going up four, up one and right four. So up one, right four, one, two, three, four. Up one, right four, one, two, three, four. To make the rest of the line, I have to do the re reverse of that. So down one and left four, one, two, three, four. Down one and left four, one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna do my very, very best to make a straight line. And you're gonna believe this to be the straightest line you've ever seen.
Okay, so now I'm gonna do g of x. g of x this time starts where? And negative 12, right? But I really can't see negative 12, but that's where it starts. So g of x starts at negative 12 and uh, I'm gonna go up four and I'm going right one. So if I start all the way down here at negative 12, we're gonna do a, a little guesstimation of where negative 12 is to the best of my ability. It's off of here. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go up, one, okay, one, two, three, four, and over one, up, one, two, three, four, over one, 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 and there is my Again, the straightest line you've ever seen happening. All right, so I have both graphs drawn. And yesterday we talked about how to check that they are inverses. So the key things that you're checking for um, are, do they intersect on the y equals x line? Remember the y equals x line is the imaginary line along y equals x, which is when you have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. So it's my imaginary. I guess I could have made it dashed. I don't know why I made dots. My bad. Pretend those are dashes. And so first thing I check, do they intersect on the y equals x line? Yes, they do. Do all the other points appear to be the same distance from each other? Yes. So therefore these are inverses, which we already had proven algebraically. So this is just proving graphically that yes, f of x and g of x are inverses. Okay, so that ties us into yesterday. So today is focused on algebraically. Algebraically, what do we do? We use composition, substitute in functions and simplify. Graphically, we graph and see if they intersect on the y equals x line. And if all points are equal distance from the y equals x line and bam, they are, okay? So now we're gonna do um, algebraically together from start to finish, okay? So again, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna substitute in g of x into f. So our f is currently f of x equals 2x plus 4. Do you see that? Yeah. So instead of f of x, it's going to become f of 1 half x minus 2. So what that means is where x is, I'm now substituting in this whole thing. So that's 2 substituting in one half X minus two. Plus four. So we're gonna distribute, did you check in? Cause I counted you absent, so I hope you checked in. All right, so we're gonna distribute. And that's going to give us half of two is one, two times negative two is negative four. We're going to bring down our positive four. Combine like terms. They cancel and we're just left with X, which is a good start. Okay, on the other side, we repeat the same process, except this time we're taking f of x and we're substituting it into g. So we have g and g is one half x minus two. So our new x is gonna be two x plus four. So that gives us one half and we're substituting in 
2x plus 4 for x. So 1 half 2x plus 4. And minus 2. And now we're going to distribute and combine like terms. So distribute, distribute. That gives us 1x. Half of 4 is 2. And then these are going to cancel out, and we're left with x. Bam. So since both of them equal x, that means that these two functions are inverses. So the conclusion is f of x and g of x are inverses. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna do one with the quadratic. To show that no matter what, it's the same process. So we wanna know if three X squared and square root of X divided by three are inverses of each other. So again, we're substituting in G of X into F first. So it becomes F X divided by three. Okay, so where X is, it now becomes the square root of X divided by three. So we have three. And we're substituting in square root of X divided by three squared. Okay, what happens when you square square root? It cancels that out, right? So we're just left with three times x divided by three. I have a three in the numerator and a three in the denominator. So what are they gonna do? They cancel, they equal one. And I'm just left with x. So, so far, good sign. So this time we're gonna take f of x and substitute into g. Putting a function in a function here. So we have G composed of three X squared because that's what F of X is, three X squared. And that equals, so where X is, it now becomes three X squared. So we have the square root of three X squared divided by three. All right, what happened to the threes? They cancel out and I'm left with the square root of X squared. What happens when you take the square of a square root? It cancels, it just becomes X. So therefore these two functions are inverses. Okay. All right, so the last part is just practice. So it's your you do in, in verify inverses algebraically. Um, you can practice that. You can start on the classwork. You can work on your review. The answers to this will be posted. So you can always check yourself. Um, but the remaining 20 minutes is up for you to use however you need to use. Does that make sense? So if you need additional practice, you want to start on the classwork on Canvas or work on your review for your test.